All right, everybody, how's it going? Uh, today we're going to build a new network attached storage box uh, for the house here. So the current one is full and we've been planning this one for about a year and a half or so, started acquiring parts a while back and uh, finally filled the old one, got all the parts for the new one. So we're gonna go ahead and try to build it today. So we'll be building in a Classico Storage Master case. Uh, if the brand's not familiar to you, it wasn't to me either. Uh, did an open box video of this. It's also on the channel. We'll link that down in the video description. Uh, here we have our hard drives. We have nine uh, 16 terabyte hard drives. It's a mixture of Western Digital Exo, or excuse me, Western Digital Red Pros and Seagate Exos drives. Um, we've got some extra fans here that we're probably going to put in the case because the case only has four fans. We might put some top fans in it. Um, we've got our cables. Uh, so obviously, you know, you're going to need SATA power and data. Uh, these are going to be our power extension cables. Let's get around here and move this guy out of the way a little bit. Ah, everything's falling. Um, motherboard's going to be one that I already had around. It's a first gen Threadripper board, X399, ASRock board. Um, ended up not ever, uh, tried to use it for a workstation. Had a lot of stability issues when occupying more than one channel of RAM. Don't know why. RMA the board, RMA the processor, tried different kits of RAM, tried different operating systems, tried different hard drives, tried different cases, tried different power supplies. And when I occupied more than more than one channel of RAM, for whatever reason, it was unstable. So for this application, because it's just me by myself, uh, it's going to have 16 gigs of RAM in it, two, two 8 gig sticks in the same channel. And stability hasn't been a problem doing that. So it should work just fine. I have noticed, though, that Recently, some new BIOS updates have come out for this, more recently than the last time I tried to do a build with it. And so maybe the new BIOS updates have fixed the problem. We're gonna kind of figure that out as we go along. So we'll move that guy out of the way. Uh, we have just a little uh, graphics card here, a GT730. Uh, the first, the Threadrippers don't have integrated graphics. So if we want any graphics, we needed a card. And I thought um, maybe we're going to use TrueNAS Core in this. I've never used that before. In the past, I've used uh, Ubuntu with uh, ZFS utilities and or ZFS tools, whatever it's called, running ZFS on Ubuntu. Uh, so this is gonna be the first time I've tried using uh, TrueNAS. And I have heard that you can do video encoding and things like that for Plex or other things with a graphics card. So we're gonna try the NVIDIA one to give that a shot. Obviously, we've got our power supply over there. Um, we're actually going to be using, I don't know if you can see it, but this guy um, can reach it. Um, I think they call these something, I think Thermal Grizzly calls these something different now. Uh, if I can hold it where there's not a glare on it, there we go. Uh, but this is the um, carbon, what do they call it? Carbon thermal pad, I think it has a different name now. Uh, but instead of using thermal paste, it's just a square thermal pad that doesn't dry out. So good for long service life systems like this is going to be. I don't intend to have to repaste this and, uh, you know, less maintenance for servers and things is better. And this is something that doesn't dry out. You don't have to repaste. So and I've used it in the past. Uh, it is not quite as good as thermal paste, um, but I don't intend to load the processor in this that heavily. So it should work fine for this application. Uh, what else do we have going on down here? So we've got our cooler. Uh, currently it has a 2U, because I had this motherboard and processor deployed in another uh, system that I'm not gonna use anymore, uh, but it currently has a 2U um, heat sink on it and fan, which is very loud. And I kind of wanted to get away from that. So we're going with a bigger Noctua one um, that I have on a different workstation, same, same heat sink I'm using on a different Threadripper workstation that I have, uh, very quiet and not, uh, you know, if, you've, if you have any experience with server grade stuff, you know when those fans ramp up, they can be a little loud. So this one's gonna be a lot quieter and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we've got our power supply down there. Um, come to this side. We have some more uh, power extension cords just in case we need those. Uh, because I do like these like one to five power chain things, except they can get a little tight when you're plugging one into the next to the next. So. Sometimes using a little extension to come off of those gives you some more breathing room. This will be our operating system drive. This is Intel Optane. Uh, so they've come down recently in price. It's not very big. I think it's 58 gigs or something. Uh, let's see if it says. Don't see it on here, but I knew I wasn't gonna need a very big one. And so we'll be using that as our OS drive. Good for long service life. Maybe not the most cost effective if you're looking for space, but if you don't need a lot of space, it's fine. Uh, this guy's our HBA. Uh, picked this up on eBay. 
I will put a link to it. None of this stuff's sponsored. I don't have any affiliate links. I buy all of this stuff myself. So if I put it, if I put it in the comments, it's simply for your reference, uh, not so that I can get a kickback out of it. Open this guy up. So it has both a half height and a full height bracket. We'll be putting the full height bracket on it. But you can see we just have our too many SAS connectors coming out the back, and those are one to four. So we'll have eight of our hard drives coming off of this guy, and we're just gonna hook one in with a SATA cable to the motherboard. So that's about it for parts. Let's go ahead and um, get all this junk off the table and start building this thing. We're going to plug it into our handy dandy backup battery down here since we do plan to do a bios flash let's make sure we got it on the side that's actually battery backed up one of these sides is back up one of them is not okay lovely well, lights on the motherboard that's always good Which side is power i'm going to press one and hope for the best well all the fans turned on Ooh, that didn't sound very good. I don't see any smoke, so that's... <laughs> I hear all the fans spinning. Or, I mean, I hear the fans spinning, I also hear all the drives spinning. Yeah, stuff's lighting up. Hey, hey, hey! We're making progress. We don't have a, don't have a BIOS yet, but... Uh, making progress. Uh, eight hard drives? Mm, oh, that's right. I forgot. I was like, where's number nine? Then I forget it's hooked directly to the motherboard. Okay, are we going to get a BIOS? Or are we stuck in a boot loop? Hey, cool. We have a BIOS. So we're going to let this sit for a minute, see if we hit a steady state temperature on the uh, processor, just to kind of see where that's at. Uh, and then we'll flash the BIOS. And um, we can't really monitor hard drive temperature right now, so we'll give it a BIOS flash, boot it up, try to install uh, TrueNAS. Uh, I haven't done that before. Um, might put a video together about that, just because it's going to be the first time I've ever seen it, and that might be a good walkthrough for other folks. Uh, but thank you all for hanging out with us today. Hope you enjoyed the build. And um, <laughs> We'll fix the cable management, maybe put a picture up of it later. But uh, so far, it seems to be working. All the drives are detected, and everything should be good to go. Thank you, guys. See you later.